it's been a while guys so sorry for the long absence i needed some space to deal with some personal issues many thanks to everyone that checked on me i really appreciate i appreciate the love and the concern god bless you i was speaking with a co-worker a couple of years ago and the issue of god and salvation came up he said god doesn't care and allows humans to suffer so he can't serve God and he'll rather believe in science. Well, here's my response in this video. I am a Christian, so kindly note that my perspective is formed from a godly point of view. What is suffering and why do we suffer? Suffering is the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. Let us start from the story of creation. It started with God creating the heavens and the earth, all the creatures that live in it. And after this grand feat, God saw that all he had made was beautiful. And he decided to create man to rule over everything. Kindly note the use of the word rule which also translates as dominate. Genesis chapter one, verse 26 tells us, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so man was created and God also thoughtfully created the woman to be his helpmate and enjoy all this with him. These were the instructions that were given. The do's found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now the don'ts. You may eat of every fruit in the garden, but of the tree of good and evil thou may not eat. I will explain the significance of these instructions with some experiences I have had. Let's start with the do's. Be fruitful, multiply, and dominate. A few weeks ago, we hosted a baby shower in church for two of our pregnant moms. The way we usually do this is we'll have the expectant couples seated on a decorated platform. Then the woman will sit in a designated section and we'll have fun activities and games. I host the game section most of the time because I'm quite talented in that area. Well, this time, I had the woman do a scavenger hunt game. I had come to church quite early in the morning and I had hidden some cards in strategic spots all over the church and I had printed some sheets of paper with clues about how to locate the cards. Here are some of the clues I gave. Quite easy, right? The winner of the game was to be the person with the most number of cards found. Well, the funniest thing happened. A lot of the women went about looking for the cards without reading the clues. So even though the clues were easy and the cards within reach, many of them struggled to find the cards. Now God has given us various clues and instructions to follow that will lead to successful and stress-free lives. But do we study these instructions? It's all here in the Bible. And even if we do, do we read to understand? There's a word for that. It's called meditation. And the Bible aptly says in Hosea 4 verse 6 that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So I ask, is God wicked? Number two, I come from a very rich country, Nigeria, rich in human and natural resources. 
according to a LinkedIn article by this guy, Nigeria is a country rich in mineral resources, including oil, natural gas, coal, tin, iron ore, limestone, lead, zinc, and many others. These resources are in high demand by global brands and countries as they are crucial to the production of various goods and services. He ended the article with these words, these resources have significant economic importance and are used in the production of various industrial products. The government and private sector should invest in the exploration and exploitation of these resources to boost the country's economy. He's not the only one that has been encouraging that we tap into the resources that God has blessed us with. But we still do nothing, so we suffer. We've been blessed already. We have the brains. All we have to do is to obey the instruction, be fruitful, multiply, and dominate. So I ask, is God wicked? Really? Every human being God created has been endowed with talents and gifts with which God expects us to be fruitful, multiply, and dominate. But how many of us take the time to discover these talents, groom them, and use them? What we don't understand is that the key to dominating our world is essentially on our inside. But so many of us are full of excuses. So let me ask again, is God wicked? Let me pause here to say, if this is the type of content you enjoy, kindly like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Now let's address the don'ts. You may eat of every fruit in the garden, but of the tree of good and evil, you may not eat. What happened thereafter? We went ahead and munched on the forbidden fruit. And we gave excuses like we still do now. Adam said Eve gave it to him. Eve in turn said the serpent convinced her to eat it. Well, whatever. But there are consequences to face and it's suffering. First of all, we were chased out of the beautiful garden God created for us to enjoy. And we were made to live under a curse. Note that suffering stems from the devil and the access we give to the devil in our lives. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. He said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Verse 17 says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. That was the curse. But God started thinking about damage control strategies to restore man back to fellowship with him. After searching through generations, God decided on a man, Abraham. Through him, God's own nation was born. Though flawed, but it was all part of the plan. And centuries later, Jesus was born a culmination of the grand redemption plan and the rules for salvation and successful living was upgraded acts chapter 16 verse 31 tells us believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household but what do we say to that gaining god's attention has got to be harder than merely believing in jesus so I'm leaving this issue for you to judge, guys. Is God really wicked and uncaring? But even after we believe, we may still experience suffering 
And this is because the serpent, the devil, is still in existence, causing chaos all around. But the Bible still has the manual for dealing with such issues. So my admonition for us all today is this. Live by the book, the living word of God, and watch God intervene in your suffering. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Till my next video, much love from me to you. Bye.